Welcome guys. In this video, I'm going to go through some main tips and tricks you should know for the MCAT. So these are kind of just general tips for the overall test, and then we're going to have more videos for specific subsections of the MCAT. So let's begin. My first tip, which I tell everyone, is that they should study specifically for this test. So the MCAT is specifically meant to train people who are doctors. It's to test if they are good doctors or not. It's a 7.5 hour long test, so it's unlike any other test you've written before. So one of the main problems that I see people do a lot is they think, okay, I've been a science student all my life in undergrad, so I know these topics. I know chemistry, biology, and just because I know these topics and I've done well in my undergrad courses, that I can do well on the MCAT as well. That's not what the MCAT is like. That's not what your experience is going to be like. Those tests in your undergrad are meant to specifically test for your knowledge on that topic, whereas on the MCAT, they're testing things such as critical thinking ability. So it's not as important on the MCAT to memorize all the details. It's more important that you have a passage, you can read it, extract the relevant information, and then answer the question that you have in front of you. So for the MCAT, what you need to do is do a lot of practice and do practice that's specifically meant for the MCAT. So a lot of like passage questions and multiple choice questions, these are worded and designed so that you are tested for the same criteria that you're going to be tested for on the MCAT. So the one main thing is to study specifically for the MCAT. That would be the number one tip. Next, you should practice a lot more than you do reviewing. A lot of people, they have a specific amount of time that they can study for, but they waste too much of it on content review. So my tip would be, no matter how much time you have, whether it's 30 days or more, you should always have only a third of it be for a content review and then two thirds, so the majority should be for practice. So content review is important because no matter how much science you study, like even if you studied all these topics before, you are gonna forget a lot of it. So it's important that you go back and brush up on some topics that you've forgotten a little bit and then jump into practice because you need that foundation before you can do practice, but then through practice you can learn a lot more. So you can do a question, answer it, and then see that if you got the answer correctly, then you're pretty solid on this topic and it's not something you need to review as much. Maybe if you need to review a little bit, then you can go back and do that. But you learn a lot more from your mistakes. So if you have a question and you got that completely wrong, then you know that this is a topic I really need to study on. So you go back and you focus on that topic. That's so much better and it's so much easier to learn by filling in the gaps in your knowledge than doing a complete content review where you go through like all of the different books on the MCAT and every single company has so many different books filled with so much knowledge. Like who knows how much of that is actually gonna show up on your specific MCAT and a lot of it you are already set on. So now you're just kind of wasting time reviewing things just because you feel like you should study everything even though you're set for that and your time could be used for something else. Next, when you're actually studying, what you need to do is create a distraction-free environment. So you should put your phone away or anything else that might distract you and then it would be really beneficial if you went and studied somewhere else. So somewhere outside of the house. It doesn't really matter where. For me personally, I came to my university and I go to either the library or an empty classroom. So I have to make sure that I'm not in the house and distracted by whatever chores I need to do at home. And also, if you're somewhere else, make sure you're not distracted by friends who keep coming to you and wanting to talk. Just find a zone where you can have silence and concentrate, and then it's just you without distractors. So whatever works for you, go to that place. And then it's also good to just kind of get out of the house because if you're in the house in your pajamas, you're not really in studying mode. So if you want to get into the mode for studying for MCAT, actually get up, get dressed, and go somewhere else. And then this is your place where you're studying for the MCAT, so your whole mindset should be about studying for the MCAT. Next, in terms of prereqs, it will be useful to take all the courses beforehand in university. So all the main courses that show up, the science ones, such as chemistry and biology, people ask a lot which prereqs should I take. It would be a lot more useful if you took these beforehand so that when you get to studying for the MCAT, you just have a quick content review in which you're just reviewing subjects instead of learning them. That would save you a lot of time. And then if you know them from before, then your knowledge is a lot deeper too. So you're not gonna get tripped up by questions that actually do try to test your knowledge. So it would be beneficial for most of these courses that you did take them in undergrad. And the key one would be biochemistry. The one which showed up for me the most on my MCAT, like pretty much most of my 
biology and biochemistry section, that was biochemistry. So I was very glad that I took biochemistry, that I paid attention in class and I understood all the topics, and then I didn't really need to review it when I was going over biochemistry, but I still did really well specifically on that section because biochemistry helped a lot. So you should do that for most of the courses. The two which don't matter as much are physics and psychology. For physics, on the MCAT, it's probably, it's going to be the topic which is the least amount. So there's a chemistry and physics section, but that's a lot more chemistry and organic chemistry than it is physics. So the little amount of physics that shows up, it's going to be kind of surface level. It just tests your understanding of equations. So it might just be like, here's an equation. The values are somewhere in the passage. You just need to literally take them and plug them in. As long as your unit conversion and all of that is correct, you're going to get the right answer. It matches with one of the answers given to you, and you just choose that. You don't have to really understand the theories in physics as much. So a course might help you out, but it's not necessary to take it because you can quickly learn what physics you need to. And for psychology, a lot of it is kind of just memorization of different topics. So a lot of people who take the MCAT, they don't necessarily take the behavioral sciences in undergrad, but you can learn these much more quickly than learning something like biology and chemistry. So you can go through a book, learn the different topics, and with every single definition, I'd also memorize some example scenario. And if you get that, then you're going to be set for that last section of the MCAT because a lot of it is just testing if you know different de definitions from psychology and sociology. So that part, it shouldn't be too bad with a book and some flashcards. And additionally, you should know that when you do take a course for anything in undergrad, of course, that's going to be a lot harder than it is on the MCAT. So if you can handle things like general chemistry, organic chemistry as actual courses, whatever says it on the MCAT, it's not going to be as difficult. It's going to be a much more clear and straightforward answer, and it won't require like a lot of equations and math. It'll probably just be a simple equation or a simple conversion from one thing to another. So if you have a deeper understanding, it helps you to solve the straightforward questions that are on the MCAT. Another general study tip I would have is to use flashcards a lot. So it depends on whoever you are, what your studying style is. Some people are really reliant on notes. Some people are more visual learners. Some people are more textbook learners. But I feel like everyone could benefit from flashcards. That's something which some people are obsessed with and they use them all the time and they're really good at making flashcards and using them. But a lot of my friends don't actually know how much benefit there is to using flashcards. I know me personally, I didn't think flashcards were worth the trouble of making in the first place to help study topics because I could just go to like a board and just write down everything that I know on a topic instead of going through a bunch of different flashcards. But specifically for the MCAT, because I heard that flashcards help a lot, I started using flashcards. I used a specific app called Anki, and in that I made a bunch of different flashcards for all the different topics on the MCAT, and then I made some key ones for topics which I had a lot of trouble with, so that I could say that I need to keep reviewing these cards more so than other cards. And this is an app, so you can just have these cards on your phone, and every single day as I was commuting from home to uni and back, I would just be going through my flashcards, maybe I'm listening to some music as well. So since you're going to be on the bus and you're going to be pulling out your phone anywhere, anyway, or like when you're in line somewhere else, just any situation in which you're bored, you know you're going to pull out your phone. So instead of randomly just browsing the internet, what you can do is open this app, use flashcards, and you can do this at any time. So the time builds up as you keep doing this, and it really helps you study. So once I did that for the MCAT, I actually started using flashcards in pretty much like every course that I take from now on. So don't underestimate the value of flashcards. Definitely try these out. Next, you should try to have a flexible schedule and work at your own pace. So we provide a lot of schedules for you that you can, you should follow. And generally, you should do whatever we say on a specific day. But maybe you're feeling like doing chemistry at some point rather than biology. All that really matters is that you get content review done when content review is done, needs to be done, and practice when practice needs to be done. Too many people, they stress out too much about the MCAT and then they think I need a schedule to follow. And so they get a schedule, but then they try to follow it religiously. And then that just ends up stressing them out. If by a certain day they needed to get something done, but something came up in life that distracted them from studying and they couldn't get it done, then they begin to stress out too much and worry about falling behind on their schedule. So don't let that happen. Don't stress out too much. Remember to take breaks. Remember that your schedule should be flexible as long as you're generally in the right area where you need to be for studying for the MCAT. So don't stress about schedules way too much. 
it's very important that because as we said the MCAT is a 7.5 hour exam it's important to study for it specifically and what that really means is to study in the MCAT situation so there are a lot of practice full-length tests that you can find online we have a bunch as well so you need to do those full-length tests under testing conditions so that means that the test actually takes seven and a half hours so you should ideally also do it when the MCAT takes place which is 8 in the morning so you get up you would do whatever morning routine you're going to do on your actual MCAT day and then get ready to sit down at 8 and then do the test for seven and a half hours only take breaks when you're scheduled to take breaks don't ever pull out your phone or your note to go and check something so I know it's easy to like when you're practicing questions you do a certain topic when you don't understand a topic and you got a question wrong then you go back to your notes on that topic and find out what the actual answer is on the MCAT you don't do that if you're writing a practice MCAT you do it as if you're writing the actual MCAT and so you don't look at your notes or take out your phone and Google something you just kind of keep it in mind that okay this is something that I need to refresh because what you will do after you write the full length test is to spend a lot of time reviewing every single question so just leave that for later it's important that you build the stamina to last during the seven and a half hours because this is one thing which gets a lot of people they think that they can handle this entire test but then they've never practiced it beforehand so on the actual MCAT when they get near the end they're already just way too fatigued to pay attention to the psychology section so this is gonna dock some scores so it's important that you practice this under real MCAT conditions and then it would also be important for you to try to do calculations using a pen and paper so just get any notepad and use a pen and do all written math to do any calculation that you need to don't rely too much on a calculator or your phone or anything like that because once again you don't have this on the MCAT so it's important that you know how to like do unit conversions and move decimal places around because these are small places where you can lose a lot of marks on the MCAT so it's important that you have this skill down as well so once again nerves can affect people's score a lot if they freak out about things like scheduling or if they are too focused on the MCAT and how much it weighs so that's why like practicing can be pretty important as well because when you practice a full MCAT this is a situation in which you've been a number of times before so when it's your actual MCAT day you just think okay this is kind of like another practice MCAT that I'm doing try not to think about just how much it matters and how much of an effect it's going to have on you getting into med school just try to think of it as another practice MCAT you're doing and this is a situation in which you've been before you have like the same routine the same food set out and everything so when you try and go and write it you just write it as if you wrote any other MCAT and if you don't do this you might get caught up in nerves and have test anxiety but if you're calm and you know that this is just another MCAT and you've done everything that you could to prepare for it then your score is not going to be affected negatively so always try to stay calm and try to prepare for the MCAT as much as you can so that you know that you can handle this we have a few more tips another thing with doing the full length MCAT is that you got to play with timing so once again a lot of people might think that they're good with answering questions and they know topics for every single section of the MCAT but when you actually get down to doing equations for example if you get a physics passage on the first part it might take a lot of time for you to do that and then your timing on that section might not be so great so important it's important for every single section you play around with timing and then when you're on your actual MCAT you know that okay I'm spending way too long solving this equation way, or way too long on this passage it's time to move on so that's one thing to make sure to focus on when you're doing a full length test practice with timing and make sure that for every section you should have a few minutes left at the end for cars you can't really study for this so it's important that you do a lot of practice for this right from the beginning of when you start studying so already from the beginning just jump into it and do a lot of studying for cars so you need to do a lot of practice so that you get a feel for how to do critical reading from passages but a lot of the different resources that aren't AMC they are a bit too complicated so don't be too bummed out on scores for cars specifically it is a tough section just make sure you do a lot of practice know how to do critical thinking develop that skill and don't be bummed out too much about the score and just keep developing this skill and we're gonna have a specific video just talking about tips on how to improve your car score but for now just know that you should do a lot of practice and going along with that in general don't be bummed out about your scores that you're getting while you're practicing because a lot of it is harder than what the MCAT will actually be 
So when you do like actual AAMC material, you'll see that it's a lot more straightforward than other practice questions you've done before. And that's because before what you want to try to do is to actually understand the topic and know that you get it at a higher level. And then on the MCAT, all it is is just applying it. So just keep that in mind all the time and know that when the actual MCAT comes, you're going to do really well. And that's pretty much it. The last thing I have to say is make sure you take a lot of breaks and that's so that you stay motivated. So if you check out our schedules, we have a lot of breaks planned. We tell you to take 15 or 30 minute breaks. And then on the last day, I would suggest that you do a little bit of review for sure so that you brush up on some topics which you think you might forget. But at that point, it's the last day. So you can't really cram in too much more information. So on the last day, just kind of take a break for most of the day, relax, do whatever you find to be fun and focus on that and try not to focus on the MCAT. 